The sparking you just saw was the result of a bad electrical connection, which in the worst case can create a lot of heat and eventually even start a fire, which almost happened at my parents house two years ago. And no, I didn't do the electrical wiring there that caused this problem, but I repaired it afterwards so that something like this will not happen again. Needless to say, having good electrical connections in your house wiring or similar is key when it comes to safety, which I always pay attention to. But on the other hand, I sometimes do some very sketchy stuff when it comes to the electrical connections of my perfboard projects. And thus I started to wonder what would be the best electrical connector you could use. So I got myself all the common ones like Vago terminals, screw terminals, all kinds of cable shoes and of course ferrules, which are super important. And in this video I will conduct a rather big experiment in order to not only find out what the best electrical connector type is, but also to show you how to use each one properly. Let's get started! This video is sponsored by Knipex, who provided the two crimping tools that I will be using during the video. First off, what is wrong with the way I connected a copper wire to my project through a PCB screw terminal? Well, the problem is not the terminal itself, but instead the used wire type, which is stranded wire. As you can see, it consists of very thin individual conductors, which come together to form a bigger conductor. This way the wire is very flexible, which is great for non-stationary projects. On the other hand of course, you got solid wire, which only consists of one big copper conductor and thus it is more stiff. Now using solid wire with the screw terminal is completely fine and can often be seen in your modern house wiring. The reason is that as soon as you apply pressure with the screw, the big copper conductor holds against and thus is kept under pressure properly for a long time to come. But if you try to do the same thing with stranded wire, then you might have a good connection at first, but eventually the thin copper wires will give in and lose pressure. Which brings us to the big problem of electrical connectors, contact resistance. You see, now that there's less pressure between the thin wires and the screw terminal, there's no longer such a good electrical conductivity between them and thus the so-called contact resistance increases. Since we know that resistance equals voltage divided by current and power equals current multiplied by voltage, we can come up with this formula that states that the power loss equals resistance multiplied by current squared. So if for example the contact resistance doubles, the generated power loss doubles as well, which by the way gets dissipated as heat. With more heat the electrical connector can potentially warp and thus increase the contact resistance even more. This can become a vicious cycle in which not only heat gets generated, but also if the stranded wire becomes completely loose, can lead to the creation of tons of sparks and in the worst case to a fire. Needless to say, we want to avoid that, so why not just simply solder the thin wires together to create one big conductor and insert that into the screw terminal. Well, sadly this is also a no-go since the soft solder will also lose its applied grip over time and thus enter the vicious cycle from before. A solution to this problem however are such wire ferrules, which with the help of a bit of external pressure close around the thin wires and thus turn them into one solid conductor. To use them you simply need to know your wire cross section, in my case 1.5 square millimeter. Then select the fitting ferrule according to the color scheme, remove 10mm of insulation, put the ferrite on, place it in the crimping tool and off you go. And just like that you got a perfectly screw terminal usable wire. But of course screw terminals are not the only available option when it comes to making good electrical connections. There are also Vago terminals, cable shoes, simple soldering and also butt connectors, whose name I didn't made up. Vago 221 terminals are my favorites, 
and can be used not only with solid wires but also stranded wires since it comes with a spring mechanism inside which constantly applies pressure. Cable shoes on the other hand are for more specialized connection tasks like connecting to a battery or for example creating a ground plane for your moped's electrical system. To use them you simply choose a fitting one according to their color which once again represents different conductor sizes. Strip around 7mm of your wire's insulation, put the shoe on and use the correctly colored segment of your crimping tool in order to bond the wire with metal through pressure. And last but not least we got the simple solder connection, which can be done by simply soldering two wires together. Only problem about that is that in comparison to the other connectors so far, you cannot easily separate the conductors from one another once the connection is done. The same problem applies to the butt connectors, which by the way get crimped to the wires in pretty much the same way as the cable shoes. And now that we are familiar with pretty much all the common connector types, except maybe the JST connectors which I sometimes like to use when I got lots of data lines and only left out because you usually do not draw much current with them, which one is the best one? And with best one I mean the one with the lowest contact resistance. To find that out I got my highly professional test equipment here which I will hook up to all the different connector types according to this schematic. Now the power supply will pump a constant 5 amp or 10 amp into the circuit, which I will confirm with my multimeter. And all I have to do is to measure the voltage drop as close as possible to the connector, so that the majority of the voltage drop will be from the contact resistance instead of the wire resistance. Then all we have to do is to divide the measured voltage by the current and we got our resistance. And with the explanation out of the way, I started the experiment, which pretty much had me curious all the way through, because I actually had no idea which connector slash connection would be the best. Except maybe the solder connection, since there we are basically fusing two metals together with the help of another metal. Now taking all the measurements took me around 3 hours in total, because I actually used 3 different wire pairs and also 3 connectors of the same type for each measurement, so that I can later calculate a more reliable average value. And after I finished up my note sheets, I moved all the measurements into the spreadsheet. I was pleased to see that the measurement difference between wire pairs and the same connectors was very little which means that the crimping tools and connectors do a very reliable job every time. Also the calculated milliohm value for the 5 amp and 10 amp measurements were also very close to one another, which means that the connectors do not mind a higher current flow, but always make sure to not exceed the manufacturer's given limits. And now let's finally get to this chart, which clearly shows us that the winner of this resistance contest is the solder connection, followed by the butt connector, cable shoe ring, screw terminal and then Vago terminal. The two worst performing connectors were the cable shoe push on, which was obvious due to its wiggle room, and the PCB screw terminal, which was quite a big shock for me since I love using them. But keep calm, because with the average resistance of around 2.2 milliohm, they create a power loss of 0.22 watts at 10 amps, which is certainly a bit risky, but seriously, when are you going to draw 10 amps through them? So all in all, I'm quite happy with the results of this experiment, which are of course not perfect considering I didn't include wire resistance nor solder resistance and we also didn't consider long time resistance changes. But still you should now have a good idea of how important connectors are and how to use them, which was my sole goal all along and you fell for it. With that being said, consider supporting me through Patreon so that I can continue creating more videos like this. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative! And I will see you next time.